Hello and welcome to the My School Channel. My name is Angela and in this video we are going to continue tackling the government's jam pass question for the year 2024. Please stay with us, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the next channel. Like I said earlier, we'll be tackling the government jam pass question for the year 2024. So in this video, we're going to be focusing on questions 51 to 66. Let's begin with question 51. Military intervention in Nigerian politics was first witnessed in A, 1965, B, 1966, C, 1964, and D, 1967. The answer to this question is option B, 1966. So in July 1966, Nigeria witnessed the first coup in the country. So Nigeria transitioned from a parliamentary republic to a military system of government. So um, this um, military system was led by Major General Go Yuronsi after the coup that took place in July 1966. So the answer to this question is option B, 1966. Question 52. A major problem affecting local government in Nigeria today is A, resource control, B, personnel management, C, revenue allocation, and D, state management interference. The answer to this question is option D, state management interference. So state management interference is the major problem affecting the local governments in Nigeria today. The reason for this is that the state government is in charge of the finances of the local government. They control the finances of the local government through the state's joint local accounts. And as a result of that, the local governments are not autonomous. They do not have the ability to make decisions by themselves. They have to depend on the state government for finances. So this makes option D, state management interference, the answer to this question. Question 53. Public operations can be controlled by A, board of directors, B, judicial control, C, ownership control, and D, management control. The answer to this question is option B, judicial control. So the courts have the power to control the activities of the public corporation. So they do this by reviewing the actions of the public corporation, especially when they violate the principles of the Act of Parliament upon which they are set up. So public corporations are brought into being through the Act of Parliament that have been given by the legislature. So that is what brings public corporations into being. And whenever they violate the Act upon which they are set up, the judiciary has the right to review their actions and to declare their actions unconstitutional. This is the method by which the judiciary controls the public corporation. Option B is the answer to this question. Question 54. Public corporations in Nigeria are established through A, Acts of Parliament, B, Executive Order, C, Order in Council, and D, Judicial Review. The answer to this question is option A, Acts of Parliament. So public corporations are brought into being through Acts of Parliament. This Act of Parliament is the business of the legislature. So whenever we need a corporation that is in charge of providing essential services to the citizens, the legislature will create an Act of Parliament to bring this corporation into being. So this is how public corporations are created. Option A is the answer to this question. Question 55. A major instrument designed to promote the workings of Nigerian federalism is A, Federal Character Commission, B, National Judicial Council, C, National Assembly Commission, and D, National Defense Council. The answer to this question is option A, Federal Character Commission. So this commission is responsible for ensuring that there's fairness and equity in the distribution of the different um, positions we have in the civil service and other government offices. This is to ensure that no ethnic group within the country is um, marginalized within the society. There is a quota for the positions within the civil service for every ethnic group in the society. This is also done in universities to ensure that every ethnic group is represented in every university within the country. So all of these things are done um, by the Federal Character Commission. Option A, Federal Character Commission, is the answer to this question. Do you know that you can take practice questions with a jam simulated past question? All you need to do is to go down to the link in the description below. This takes you to the My School website where you can download the My School mobile app for your Android devices and the My School software for your laptops and computers. Please go ahead and start practicing. Now on to question 56. The party that controlled the government of Southwest states after the 1979 general elections was A. NPN, B. GNPP, C. NAP, and D. UPN. 
The answer to this question is option D, UPN or the United Party of Nigeria. This was the party that was led by Chief Obafemi Awolowo. They were the opposition party to the National Party of Nigeria, where we have the presidential candidates, Alaji Sheo Shagari, who eventually won the election and became the first executive president of Nigeria. But for the UPN, they um, controlled the southwest region after the election in 1979. They were able to win the governorship for um, states like Lagos, Oyo, Ondo, and Bendel states. And so this is the reason why they were able to control the southwest states. Option D, UPN, is the answer to this question. I believe you're enjoying this content. If yes, please don't forget to hit the like button. Click on the subscribe button and lastly, tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next videos. Question 57. Recruitment and promotion of civil servants in Nigeria remain the responsibility of A, Federal Character Commission, B, Civil Service Commission, C, National Universities Commission, and D, Federal Judicial Commission. The answer to this question is option B, Civil Service Commission. So the Civil Service Commission is responsible for the recruitment and promotion of civil servants in Nigeria. They do this without the political interference of the legislature and the executive. Sometimes these people interfere in the activities of the civil service. The civil service is meant to be independent. They are meant to be able to implement policies without interference from the leaders in power, from the officials in power. And so the civil service commission helps to prevent this interference in the affairs of the civil service so that these civil servants are not sacked because they are not following the dictates of the officials in power. So option B, civil service commission, is the answer to this question. Question 58. The commission that conducted elections that ushered in the Fourth Republic in Nigeria is A. INEC, B. NECON, C. NEC, and D. FEDECO. The answer to this question is option A. INEC, or the Independence National Electoral Commission. So this independent body was um, brought into being by the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is this commission that ushered in the Fourth Republic by conducting the election that led to the election of President Olusegun Obasanjo as our first executive president during the Fourth Republic. So the FEDECO is the Federal Electoral Commission. It was the Electoral Commission that conducted the 1979 general election. The NEC was the um, body that conducted the 1989 general election. So the answer to this question is option A, INEC, because it was the one that's ushered in the Fourth Republic. It was the one that conducted the 1999 general election. Option A is the answer to this question. Question 59. Before a treaty can be binding on a country, it has to be approved by the A, executive, B, legislature, C, judiciary, and D, military. The answer to this question is option B, legislature. So a treaty is a document that is signed by different member countries of an international organization on a specific issue. So it consists of decisions that have been made by um, negotiations between different member countries. So when a treaty is signed by an ambassador of a member country, it has to be approved by the legislature before it is binding on the country. If the legislature doesn't approve it, it is not going to be binding on that country. So option B, legislature, is the answer to this question. Question 60. The first constitution to introduce a presidential system was the A, 1966 constitution, B, 1963 constitution, C, 1979 constitution, and D, 1999 constitution. The answer to this question is option C, 1979 Constitution. It is the 1979 Constitution that led to the transition of Nigeria from the parliamentary system to the presidential system of government. So we had a system whereby we had a president who was both head of state and head of government. Unlike the system we had in 1963, where we had a head of state and the head of government. The head of state was the ceremonial president and the head of government was the prime minister. But here in the 1979 constitution, one person took the position of both head of state and head of government. It was known as the executive president. That was Alaji Sheo Shagari in 1979. Alaji Sheo Shagari was our first executive president under this presidential system of government. So this makes option C, 1979 constitution, the answer to this question. Do you have a question? Please feel free to ask your question by going down to the link in the description below. This takes you to my school website where you can ask your question and the solution will be provided to you within a short period of time. Now to question 61. One of the internal factors that led to the rise and growth of nationalism in Nigeria was A, British Labour Party, B, return of ex-servicemen, C, Pan-African Congress, and D, independence of India. The answer to this question is option B, return of ex-servicemen. So some people who went out to fight during the World War II on British side, along with the Allied forces against Germany and the Axis powers, when they returned back to West Africa, they were promised that jobs were waiting for them. But when they got back, 
these jobs were not given to them. And so this was one of the internal factors that led them to um, begin to advocate for nationalism, for self-rule within the country. So the return of ex-servicemen is an internal factor that led to the rise and growth of nationalism. The Pan-African Congress was also a factor that led to the rise and growth of nationalism, but it is an external factor, something that was happening outside of, of the country that influenced nationalism within the country. So the answer to this question is option B, return of ex-servicemen, because it was an internal factor, something that was going on within the country that led to the rise and growth of nationalism. Option B is the answer to this question. Do you have a better explanation or solution to any of these questions? If you do, please go down to the comment section below, indicate the question number and solution you'd like to share. Question 62. The political subjugation and economic exploitation of your people is known as A, colonialism, B, neocolonialism, C, apartheid, and D, indirect rule. The answer to this question is option A, colonialism. Colonialism is the political subjugation and economic exploitation of a people. So the fact that the British people came to Africa in order to subjugate them politically and also to exploit their economic resources, all of this means that the British people were colonial masters. They came here to practice the system of government known as colonialism. So it might seem like neocolonialism is the answer, but neocolonialism is a new term. It's a new form of colonialism that occurred after the independence of these African states. So they were no longer subjugating them politically, but they were exploiting their economic resources indirectly through different means after these African countries have gained independence. So the political subjugation and economic exploitation of the people is known as colonialism. Option A is the answer to this question. Question 63. The leader of the Oyo Messi in the Yoruba pre-colonial political system was A. Aremo, B. Oba, C. Bashoron, and D. Bale. The answer to this question is option C. Bashoron. Bashoron was the leader of the Oyo Messi. The Oyo Messi is a group of people who helped to advise the Alafi of Oyo on different issues going on within their society. So they are a form of legislature in that system. So the Bashar is the leader of this Oyo Messi. He acts as the voice for the Oyo Messi. He speaks on behalf of the Oyo, Oyo Messi to the Alafi and to the people of the Yoruba pre-colonial society. He also helps to implement the decision made by both the Oyo Messi and the Alafi of Oyo within the Yoruba society. And lastly, he is the one who presents on behalf of the Oyo Messi the empty calabash to the Alafi whenever he's not performing his duties properly, whenever there is a vote of no confidence on the Alafi. Once he presents this empty calabash, the Alafi will be forced to commit suicide or to go on exile. This is a vote of no confidence on the Alafi of Oyo, and it is um, presented by the Bashan. So this makes option C, Bashan, the answer to this question. Question 64. Strike action is mostly used by A, political parties, B, traders, C, parliamentarians, and D, pressure groups. The answer to this question is option D, pressure groups. So one of the mode of operation or modus operandi of the pressure group is strike action. It is the last result for the pressure group. Whenever negotiations do not work with the officials in government to influence their action in order to make policies that will favor the pressure groups, they will have no other option than to engage in strike. So this means that they do not go to work and rather they protest on the street until the government responds to their demands. So strike action is mostly used by pressure groups. To know more about pressure groups, you can subscribe to our topic by topic video lesson by going down to the link in the description below. This takes you to my school website where you can subscribe for this government topic by topic video lesson. So option D, pressure groups, is the answer to this question. Question 65. One of the functions of political party is A, promotion of interest, B, organization of election, C, political education, and D, announcement of election results. The answer to this question is option C, political education. One of the functions of the political party is to educate the public on issues of public importance so that they will be guided on what to do when election comes. So it may feel like option A is the answer to this question, but please note that the function of the political party is not to promote the interest of its members, but rather to aggregate interest. So they listen to the citizens to determine what they are interested in, and then they help to aggregate this interest and create a policy on behalf of the citizens on things that they need to be done by the government. So when they create this policy within their manifesto, they present it to the people. And when the people um, eventually vote them into power, they try to implement this policy so that things can change for the better within the society. So they aggregate interest, they do not promote their own interests. They aggregate the interest of the citizens. They are not involved in the organization of election. 
The organization of election as well as the announcement of election results is done by the independent body that conducts the election. In this case, it is INEC within our Nigerian society. So one of the functions of political party is political education. Option C is the answer to this question. Question 66. The right to vote and be voted for is A, fundamental human rights, B, freedom of expression, C, franchise, and D, electoral rights. The answer to this question is option C, franchise. Franchise is the right of um, registered adult citizen to vote and be voted for. So um, it may feel like option D is the answer to this question. Option D is electoral right, but it is not the best answer to this question because the term, the concept that is used to describe the right to vote and be voted for is franchise. So the right to vote and be voted for is not a fundamental human right. It is the right of citizens, citizens who belong to a particular country. So a fundamental human right is a right that belongs to every human being, regardless of where they come from. But the right to vote and be voted for is the right of citizens of a particular country. So it has nothing to do with freedom of expression. Freedom of expression is a separate right on its own. So option C, franchise, is the answer to this question. I believe you're enjoying this content. If yes, please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and lastly, tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release next videos.